All right, want to know the secret to everything? Getting everything you want? Today's show is about the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. Total Recall, I like that he called it, my unbelievably true life story. And uh, you know, a lot of books say something like that, like, oh, this is the greatest story you'll ever read. But in many ways, this is one of the best books I've ever read. If you want to be inspired to just uh, I would say 10x whatever your ambitions and goals are. Read this book. This is one that should be, like I say, on your uh, uh, on your shelf that you read over and over again over your lifetime. So uh, I want to welcome you to the live show today. Those of you listening on a replay later, welcome. Thanks for taking the time out in your day to learn, grow, and as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, so I've got my notes here. I take notes in two places. Let me show you my notes right here. Arnold says, I think this is such a, in a world that we live in now, uh, it's amazing the bad ideas that people have in terms of what it's gonna take to get what you want. So let's start by saying this. Some ambition you have that you don't yet have. Some far off ambition. So let's just say, for me, it's, I don't know owning a basketball team. Let's say some crazy, I've talked before about your selfish and unselfish goals. Let's say, pick a selfish goal you have. Have a million bucks, have a Lamborghini, have a, another vacation home, start a charity, start a new business. This is what Arnold Schwarzenegger's dad said. His answer to life was discipline. We had a strict routine that nothing could change. So imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger, who ends up being, you know, this, well, I'll tell you a cool story about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Let, let, before I read this, let me tell you this story just to put this in perspective of what we're about to talk about. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a man who basically got everything that he dreamed about. Now, let me just say, a little bit controversial guy. He was governor of the California, had this little scandal come out. Some people tend to fixate on that about Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I think is... In some ways, I think it's laughable that our human brain focuses like that, but it's also understandable. If you talk to an evolutionary psychologist, they would say we're all kind of robots. We gravitate towards ne the negative because it's in the story of your great, 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 great grandparents, what I call the whisper of 10,000 generations in your brain, people who avoided negative, uh, thinking about negative things about other people, sometimes were taken advantage of. And so they did not thrive quite as much as people who had this quote unquote gossip bias. So if you're one of those people that's, uh, and we all are, uh, that instead of focusing in a way that I call the more enlightened mind, so a more enlightened mind basically says, my tendencies are towards this negative gossip bias. I wanna pick up on cues that other people are, you know, trying to steal from me, rip me off, cheat me. Um, know when to do that and when not to. And when you're reading the short story of Arnold Schwarzenegger, know that the story of Arnold Schwarzenegger is not about the infallibility of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not about his saint-like status. Because as the great teacher said, uh, whoever is without sin should throw the first stone. So read the book. Think of all that Arnold did. A little kid decided dreamed about going to California, born in Austria, raised in Austria. Dream, pulled it off. Dreamed about being able to uh, be the world's top bodybuilder. Pulled it off. I think it was either five, six, or seven times Mr. Olympia, Mr. Universe. Pulled that off. Then dreamed that he'd become a millionaire. What did he do? He started a uh, mail order weights and exercise business. He was making, this is a long time ago, he's making a million dollars. That was a lot of money. Pulled that off before he was 30. Also learned how to develop real estate here at the beach in, uh, in Santa Monica. Taught himself how. Got mentors, learned how. Uh, he went out and uh, of course he did move to California. Then he decided he wanted to be an actor. Now everybody said this guy's not going to be a good actor. He could hardly speak English. Had that thick accent. Had that name, Schwarzenegger. People are like, you have to change that name. Nobody's going to be able to pronounce it. He kept going forward, and he had a little formula that I'm going to share with you on success. And, of course, he became 
a top actor. Then he said, my dream is not just to be a top actor. I'm going to be the top, the highest paid actor in the world. Sure enough, Terminator 2. He signed a contract for, I think, $29 million and something, $832.67 or something, which I thought was funny that they had negotiated the contract down to the penny, but he pulled it off. Twins made $50 million. He negotiated a way to get a lot of the back-end revenue. That made him a ton of money. Ended up with seven, his own private 747 jet, not just a little private jet, but a private airline, you know, full-on jet. Then he dreamed about being at highest position he could as a foreigner or as a non-natural born American. Couldn't be the president, but he became the governor, the two-time governor of the United States. I'm uh, sorry, not of the United States, of California, the largest state in America, you know, by revenue and population. So this guy is a dream creator and a dream uh, actualizer. He, dream, he dreamt, I read, it's not in this book, but someone said he had always wanted to marry a Kennedy, and sure enough, he married a Kennedy. So if you and I can just pull off half of the achievements, now we you may not have the same achievements, I, I never dreamed about being an actor, but let's call it the ratio of dreams to reality. I don't know if anybody has a higher dream to reality ratio as Arnold. What's your dream to reality ratio? Good gauge of this, go back to when you're 14, 15, 16 years old, when you had a lot of hopes and dreams, right? 14, 15, 16, what were your dreams? How many of them have you realized, have you actualized? So, let's get back here. What was the formula? Well, it started, and this is fascinating, when he was young, his dad said it was all about discipline. We had a strict routine that nothing could change. We'd get up at 6 a.m., and it'll be my job or mine hards, that's his brother, to get milk from the farm next door. When we were a little older and started to play sports, exercises were added to the chores. So his father and mother were instilling in him new neural pathways that unfortunately most of us, our parents, should have read this book, but they didn't. And that's why we don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, you know, <laughs> uh, if you're a woman, some women don't want to look exactly like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but uh, most guys wouldn't, wouldn't mind looking like that. He said, when we were a little older and starting to play sports, exercise were added to our chores and we had to earn our breakfast by doing sit-ups. Just think of this, little kid. Before you earn, eat breakfast, you had to earn it. Now, think of what happens to your brain with an, uh, an installation of that mentality. Because you and I, for the most part, Joel Salatin, my first mentor told me, he said, the problem is you and I, grew up with a backwards mentality. Most people in the world, when you were growing up, if you did something wrong, your parents would punish you with work. They'd be like, okay, you know, if you don't do this, you're gonna have to do the dishes for a week. Oh, you're gonna have to, you know, whatever. Sweep the floor. I remember things like that. Maybe you remember. What is that instilling? That's instilling that a negative consequence uh, is work. You know, work is a negative consequence. Whereas for Arnold, an action like working out was rewarded with the most, you know, primal of all rewards, food. Food. He wasn't punished with work. It was part of chores. That's one of the great things of growing up on a farm. If you ever, uh, if you're one of those people lucky enough to grow up on a farm, you realized chores were never punishment. It's just everybody did them. They were part of life. To survive, you did chores. Now, 90% of the world now lives urban. That means the removal of all chores. If you haven't read the book, uh, I recommend it on that. I'm doing these daily book deals, and I did one. It's If you go to my site, it's the one Joel Salatin did called Folks, This Ain't Normal, where he said, you know, it's not normal if you look at the last 10,000 years of human civilization, it's not normal to not have chores. Arnold was lucky enough to have that. If you do ever have kids, think about what guys like Joel Salatin and think about the story of Arnold. Do not negatively reverse engineer the brains of your children. And if you're single, 
don't have kids, go back into your own brain. And this is a little tough. It's tough to do, but I'll share some things that I've seen that work well. So here's what he said uh, later in the book. He said, reps, reps, reps. So the first thing, if you're writing this down, I know some of you like to take notes. The first thing is uh, you have to reprogram your brain doing actual stuff. So be careful how you reward yourself. Don't always reward yourself uh, without some action being done before. Set little goals for yourself. Try Arnold's exact formula, like Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. Before you eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner, make yourself do three push-ups, 10 sit-ups. I know that seems crazy, but try it for 67 days. Some of you are in my 67 uh, steps, the 67-day challenge, one video a day. And the reason I picked 67, why, is, well, University College London, the most cutting-edge research is now finding that's how long it takes to reprogram bad habits in your brain. And make no mistake, the things you don't like about yourself. Let me see, you can see this here. Here's today when you woke up. At every moment, you're presented with a crossroads. That's your life right there. I, this is called, in science, it's called heuristics. By the way, I'm gonna be talking about uh, how I got a million customers in my company uh, as an entrepreneur from scratch, right? And how you can too. When we talk about the new rules of marketing, there, there should be a little button that pops up here. Uh, I do this show every day at 11.30 in the morning California time. Uh, and then you can also stay. I do a private seminar. You just click the little button. It's free to register. And uh, we talk about money, finance, how to change your financial future, financial freedom. But let me give you a preview here in this Book of the Day TV show. <clears throat> For those of you who aren't watching, I'm drawing here on the board a split. So you have yes, no. It's kind of binary like a computer. So today, you woke up. It's like, am I going to do sit-ups before I eat breakfast? Most people branch to the right. They go, no. Then the next pop-up is, you know, am I going to eat eggs or am I going to eat cereal? Or am I going to eat eggs? Yes, no, no, okay, cereal, yes, boom. And your brain makes thousands of these branches. Arnold, notice, he just branched a different direction because his parents instilled that in him. Are you going to do sit-ups before you eat? Yes, boom. Then are you going to eat breakfast once you do 20? Yes. So notice, Arnold's life went off here to the left when most of ours went off to the right. And that's why Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, was able to you know, make his hundreds of millions of dollars, realize his dreams. Remember, it's not about money. This story's not about money. It's about whatever your personal dream. Everybody's got a different one. You know, It's like Pee Wee Herman in that Pee Wee Herman mo movie when he's talking to Simone. He goes, everybody has dreams. You know, what's your dreams? And he says in the movie, they said, but everybody has butts. You know, everybody has a butt. But I didn't get it because of this. And that's what this branching is. Your heuristical patterns branch off in the wrong direction. You have to branch in a direction towards what? Well, this is what he says. This is the magical formula. The formula nobody wants to talk about. There's a lot of books at, at Barnes & Noble, trust me, on success. A lot of them don't say this. <laughs> and I find it interesting that Arnold Schwarzenegger is probably more successful than the, all of the books at Barnes & Noble almost combined on self-help and stuff. Here's his formula. All of that is reps. You have to practice each move. He's talking about different things he did in bodybuilding and film. Each move, 30, 40, 50 times until you get it. From the bodybuilding days on into my acting days, I learned that everything is reps and mileage. Reps and mileage. 
The more miles you ski, the better a skier you become. The more reps you do, the better your body. I'm a big believer in hard work, grinding it out, and not stopping until it's done. The challenge appealed to me. How different is this mentality from what we're being pushed on? You know, there's a lot of books out there, what it takes to be successful and <clears throat> how you can work a few hours a day and have automated income and you just, you don't only have to work a few hours a week. You don't have to exercise that much. Just do a few minutes a day. Well, I like the mentality of starting in steps, right? I think that's great. Start out working out five minutes a day. If you're overweight, don't start out trying to work out four hours a day. You're going to hurt yourself. Start out five minutes a day. But the goal should be massive sets, or massive reps and mileage. You want to make a million dollars? Well, I'm talking about that on my next summer here in a few minutes. I take a five minute break after this TV show, and I'm going to tell you I've adopted and watched. Uh, many of those techniques that Arnold talks about here work every time. And all the other stuff, it just fades away. All those people out there trying to... There was a, a friend here. We, me and some friends went to see a movie last night. I saw the new Chris Rock movie. Not sure I recommend it, although it does have Brian Regan in it. It's pretty funny. He's a funny guy. And there was this friend that came. She's a has a great voice, came to Hollywood to become a singer. Uh, and I said to her, I said, how many hours did you practice today? And she said, kind of sheepishly, oh, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I said, how many yesterday? I said, oh, none yesterday, I got busy. And, oh, how many the day before? And I didn't mean to put her on the spot. I, I'm not looking down at her, I've been in the same place. I've been tricked too by this magic bullet lottery ticket approach. You know, I'll read you something that a friend sent me. This is going to blow your mind. This was written by Thomas uh, Edison. Let me see if I find I keep it on my phone here. And it's very similar to what Arnold Schwarzenegger says. Uh, it was written, and he was addressing this issue of people saying, whatever, you don't have to work that hard. Actually, I think I don't have it on this phone, but I, I almost memorized it. Oh, here it is. I do have it. It's Thomas Edison. He said, I am wondering what would have happened to me if some fluent talker, some slick talker, had converted me to the theory of the eight-hour day and convinced me that it was not fair to put forth my best efforts. I am glad that the eight-hour day had not been invented when I was a young man. If my life had been made up of eight-hour days, I don't believe I could have accomplished a great deal. This country would not amount to as much as it has if the young men of 50 years ago had been afraid that they might earn more than they were paid for, meaning been afraid of work. You know, the Amish, the word work, shafa, they call it, is like the highest word. The greatest word. If you want to get married, greatest compliment, you know, the girl you're wanting to marry, the guy you want to marry is for their family to be like, oh, you want to marry so-and-so? Oh, yeah, he's a hard chaffa, hard worker. In our society, things have gotten so turned upside down. And let me tell you why. I used to not believe this way. But over the years, it's becoming more obvious that this is the truth. Now, I'm not saying this from a standpoint of conspiracy. I don't believe there's one Illuminati, one person behind this whole thing. It's a general trend that's creeped in. It's creeped in for various reasons. I'm not going to go into the history of all of it. Some of it's the fact we've become more urban versus rural. Some of it's industrial power, automation. And a lot of it's okay. I'm not, an, I'm not a Luddite. I'm not an, Luddites were people anti you know, technology. But it's consumerism because, think of this, if you control lots of eyeballs, lots of people around the world watch your TV set. So you're one of the big TV channels back in the 50s and 60s. When my mom was little, like, uh, there was two channels, she said, growing up in Texas. And you watched them all. You watched the car commercials. You watched the show. You just sat there. So if you were the people, corporation, 
and you had the ability to control millions of eyeballs almost on a captive audience just sitting there staring. What message, if you wanted to be persuasive, would you show them? Would you show them, you know, images of hard work, having to do sit-ups and push-ups before you could eat? No, nobody would buy into that because people had already been raised away from that mentality. I've been raised in a city where they didn't have chores, where they didn't have any thing to do. They just kind of woke up and eggs didn't come from chickens that you have to collect the eggs. You know, eggs just come from a store. They come from a box. Milk just come from a carton. And then you see these cool, well-crafted, persuasive commercials that show you, oh, you know what you really deserve is a, is a beach, you know, being on the beach at Cancun and just relaxing. And of course, they were playing on this physics law, Einstein's law of time warps, which Kip Thornton, the famous physicist, summarized as saying, uh, "All things move towards, uh, all things move to where they age the slowest." So, you show pictures of luxury all the time. People are going to be like, "Yeah, I want that." So slowly but surely, consumerism and advertising has reprogrammed our mind. Uh, Unfortunately, it doesn't program or reprogram our mind like Arnold Schwarzenegger's parents reprogrammed his mind. And so the difference, again, like the I think it's Robert Frost, the poem, two ro you know, there's in the woods, how does that go? Two paths. I took the road less traveled and it's made all the difference in the world. See, Arnold Schwarzenegger got what everybody else only talked about. And it's not because he's magical, it's not genetic, Sure, he, he, you know, he had probably a little bit of genetics, but not really. There's millions and hundreds of millions of people who could have actualized that same stuff. It's just, we bought into the wrong story. And even if you consider yourself, you know, more enlightened than the average consumer, and I, uh, you probably are, uh, talk's cheap. Talk is cheap. Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't have to talk. In fact, I was reading an interesting thing here that I thought was funny. Uh, let me read you this quote about talk being cheap. He was talk. He said, the better you get, the less you run a, around showing off your muscles. You know, he was a big muscular. You know, you wear regular shirts, not trying to show off what you have. You talk less, less about it. I think most people that I meet that are quote unquote, in the self-help and in improving their lives. It's mostly all talk. Because if you're actually doing it, you won't need to talk about it that much. People will see. Arnold Schwarzenegger walks in a room, even before he was the famous actor, you knew this guy was different. Look at how his body looked. Look at how he carried himself. He was curious. He had every one of those traits that would stand out in a crowd. So, like Warren Buffett says, if you want to know uh, what you should become. He said, just become the person that you would notice in the room. Just become the person you would invest in if you had to invest a million dollars in someone else. If you had bumped into Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was in his 20s and he said, hey, I have an opportunity to invest in what I'm going to do in the future. I'll give you 10% of all my future income if you invest in me now. Well, a good investor probably would have spotted that opportunity. They actually did. Guys like Joe Weider, who started Gold's Gym, one of the founders of Gold's Gym. He invested in Arnold at a very young age because he saw that this guy's going places. So you have to be the person that somebody would walk by and they'd see the gleam in your eye, they'd see the curiosity and they go, that's the person I want to be like. That's the person I want to invest in. You be that person. Now, I got one other point I can get to, but I want to recommend, I highly recommend, this book is in my top, 10 or 20 of all time. It's a autobiography. It'll give you courage. It'll give you the blueprint. It'll give you stories and anecdotes to remember. Read this book. It looks long, but it reads really fast. So there's a, I've got a special deal. You can buy this at the bookstore. You can buy this uh, wherever, you know, Amazon or online. But if you buy it from me, uh, I'm going to throw in a whole bunch of bonuses. My How to read my smart reading program, that's $100. I'm going to throw that in free if you buy it 
directly from us. You get a new copy. We can ship it to almost any country in the world now. Uh, very fast. You'll get it about almost, well, you'll get it at the same speed as if you got it online or anywhere. Uh, and I'm going to also throw in my insider notes on this book, okay? That'll help you read a little faster. That'll guide your mind, and you'll be able to see what I thought was important in this book, okay? You'll get those videos. That's all free, so you're going to get $100 worth of stuff absolutely free. So you can buy it. I don't care if you buy it you know, on your own, but remember, uh, buy it from me. People are loving these book deals, so go ahead uh, and click. There should be a button right here, and you'll be able to click that, or you can go to my site and look for the book deals. Okay, what's the last point I have time to get to because there's so many more points? Well, <clears throat> I'll read you this. So you know I talk a lot about mentors. So Arnold Schwarzenegger had a mentor, okay? And by the way, this is one of the things I'm going to be elaborating on a little bit more in this next seminar. There should also be a button here. You can uh, you can register for my seminar. All right. So Arnold Schwarzenegger was smart. He decided that he was going to go visit his mentor. People ask me what you should invest in. I'm like, well, sometimes you should invest in a plane ticket. Go meet your mentors. So this guy, Reg Part, was one of the top bodybuilders in the world. Arnold saw him as a mentor. Arnold said, my biceps were extraordinary in size, height, and muscle peak. I had ripped pectoral muscles and the best chest pose. I had a real bodybuilder frame. But I also had my weaknesses, my shortcomings. Relative to my torso, my limbs were too long, so I was always having to build the arms and legs to make the proportions. Even with massive 29-inch thighs, my legs still looked thin. Okay, my triceps fell short. So notice here, interesting enough on a side note, he knew his strengths and he knew his weaknesses, just like uh, Peter Drucker says. If you're on my 67 Steps, you should have gotten your free copy of audio or, or the actual book. Peter Drucker managing oneself. He talks about this. Most people think they know what they're good at. Most people are wrong. Even then, most people know they think they know what they're weak at. Even then, most people are wrong. Yet you can only build on strength. So Arnold Schwarzenegger says to be successful, we must be brutal with ourselves and focus on our flaws. That's when your eye, your honesty, and your ability to listen to others come in. Bodybuilders who are blind to themselves or deaf to others usually fall behind. He said, even more challenging is the biological fact that in every individual, some body parts develop more readily. In yourself, not just your body, you're going to run into the same issue. So he says, he finds his mentor, Reg Park, gave me the wake-up call. He had perfect 29-inch calves, so Arnold's calves were weak. He trained his, When I trained with him in South Africa, so Arnold flew to South Africa, and he found the formula. I saw what Arnold, what Reg Park did to achieve those great calves. He trains his calves every day, not just three times a week, and with a mind-blowing amount of weight. I was, before I met my mentor, I was proud that I'd worked up to calf raises with 300 pounds, but Reg Park had a cable system that let him apply 1,000 pounds, triple the weight Arnold was doing. I said to myself, that's what I need to do. I have to train my calves totally differently and not give them a chance, even give them a chance of not growing. When I got to California, I made a point of cutting off all my sweatpants at the knees. I would keep my strong points covered. So he covered up his biceps, his chest, his back, his thighs. But I made sure that my calves were so exposed that everybody could see them. Another great lesson there. That's a fascinating lesson. To expose your weaknesses. I was relentless and did 15 sets, sometimes 20 sets of calf raises every single day. And he goes on to say later that people, his calves got so big uh, that people thought he had had an operation. Remember, reps, reps, reps. Everybody thinks there's some, oh, I'm going to read this one book. I'm going to read this one formula. Oh, I'm going to buy this one thing. Lots of things will help you and assist you along the way. But you won't get what you want if you don't put in the reps. Name somebody who did. 
Now you might say, but what about someone who inherits their money? They don't get what they want. Have you ever met people who inherit money? They're usually living a horrible existence. As, as uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning historian, Will Durant says, he says, I, I don't know if I believe in heaven or hell afterlife, but I believe people experience it on this earth. People who get something given to them at birth, they're not happy. Rarely are they as happy as somebody who did the Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you put Arnold Schwarzenegger under a brain scanner and you look at the levels of dopamine, and there's science on this, this is just not my opinion. Daniel Kahneman, Princeton uh, Nobel Prize winner, he said two types of happiness. One's moment by moment and one's memory happiness. And memory happiness is only achieved when you can look back and say, I set a goal and I pulled it off. So be one of those people with high memory happiness. Be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Put in the reps and sets. Rewire your brain. Do simple things like he did to rewire your brain. My friends and neurobiologists, and one day I saw him eating, I saw him eating candy. I, one of my best friends, he was on a computer, and I said, what are you doing? Every 10 minutes I see you grab a little piece of candy, a little Tic Tac or something. He said, oh, I'm doing my taxes. I'm doing my accounting, and I hate doing it. So I reward myself every 10 minutes. I said, why'd you do that? He said, well, I have a PhD in the brain. I've studied the brain, and I know you can rewire your brain with little rewards. Arnold's mom did it by making him do sit-ups and then eat. You find yours. He also rewarded himself by showing off his weaknesses by covering up you know, his chest, his strengths, and showing his weak calves and then rewarded himself over time as he put in the reps and sets and people came up to him and said, wow, your calves are so big. See, you can use social pressure on yourself too. Lots of little tricks. Get this book. It's truly life-changing. Every person I've ever recommended. Arnold Schwarzenegger is not a perfect man. You're going to have a hard time looking for a book by a perfect person. But this is a fountain of knowledge and practical stuff. So get this book. Put it on your shelf. Give it as a holiday gift. When everybody's given stump, dumb stuff that breaks and just teaches the wrong consumer mentality, give yourself this book or give someone else this book. Biggest question for you. Two questions. Leave a comment here. Number one, what's the biggest lie you've bought into, whether it's from bad upbringing, from consumerism, about how you're gonna get what you want? <clears throat> what's a big lie? Could be automation, only putting a few hours. Number two, what's one practical thing you can do to start rewiring your brain to follow this Arnold Schwarzenegger reps and sets hard work approach? Answer those two questions. All right, let me know. I love reading these. I comment back when I can, and there's a community of people that comment back. So let me know what you think, all right? Anyway, I will talk to you soon.